Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. Whether you're a pastor or a volunteer leader or a volunteer ministry person in your local church, Ministry in Motion is for you and it's aimed at helping you and growing you to be a more effective minister for Jesus Christ. I'm Anthony Kent, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to today's program. We have a very special program. Today's program, we're looking at a case study of an effective discipleship program from the Fresno Seventh-day Adventist Spanish Church. And we have the pastor of the church here, Pastor Antonio Reta. Thank you very much, Antonio. Very happy to be here. Yes. Now, discipleship. Let's begin right at the very beginning. What is a disciple? A disciple would be a follower or someone that it's being mentored by uh, another person. That's mainly what the definition of a disciple would be. Right, okay. And you've got a discipleship program? Yes. Okay. And uh, I've done this uh, program. I've been doing it for the last few years at my church. And it's just given me wonderful results. Right. And this discipleship program is designed to train, to equip, and to mobilize your church members so they could do ministry. Okay. Now, tell us more about this discipleship program. Yes. What is it that you actually do in this program? Okay. In this program, it's a very easy to use practical uh, program that, that I use. And uh, the way that I came about, it was out of my own frustration. I was looking at my congregation and I had to constantly ask my question, how can I mobilize my church members so that they could do what God has called us to do and that is to reach out to the community. And so um, out of that frustration, my wife and I, we made a decision to uh, visit some of the fastest growing congregations here in the United States and abroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the places that we, we could not go, we just purchased their materials, we bought their books and uh, try to read and study uh, the different ministries that these churches have in place. And interestingly enough, in our research, we found out that all of these fast growing congregations, that they all had something in common of all of the ministries and the department, the, the, the uh, uh, programs that they have, we found out that they all have a discipleship program in place. Okay. So immediately my wife and I, we, dis we thought, well, this is something that we need to do for our church. As we kept reading, as we kept um, collecting more materials from these uh, different churches that had a discipleship program in place, uh, we also found out another thing, and that is that all the discipleship, discipleship program classes that they offered, uh, uh, they were made out of four classes. So all of them were offering four classes as part of their discipleship program. We kept reading, mm -hmm. we kept studying, doing a, a, few, a little bit more research to find out that not only do all of these churches have the same a discipleship program in place that are that is made out of four classes, but we also found out that the content is the same across the board. Oh, really? The content, the description of their classes are the same. Uh, they just put different names to it, like you know, uh, in this particular church that uh, we went, they would call it uh, Discipleship One, Discipleship Class Two, Discipleship Class Three, and Four. Mm -hmm. Other places they would call it Leadership Class One, Two, Three, and Four. Other church that we attended and we participated uh, in their program, uh, they call it uh, uh, Class 101, 201, 301, 401. And then you go to South America and you find out that they use the same classes, the same program, and, and uh, the same content, and, and uh, they call it differently. And that's the name that I adopted for the discipleship program that I've implemented at my church. Right, and okay. so the names to those classes is uh, Win, Consolidate, Discipleship, and Send. But okay, again, so that's the four classes. Then. Those are the four classes, yes. Right. <clears throat> Win? Consolidate, consolidate, send, send, and the, and when consolidate discipleship and send. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, who who is involved with those classes? 
who attends? <clears throat> When we invite, the, when uh, our congregation was not acquainted with this discipleship program, because it, we did not have it, and so what we, when we introduced it to our church, we invited not only the visitors, but we also invited our church members so that they could get acquainted with the program as well. Okay. So basically, anyone who's prepared to come yes. and to be a disciple of Jesus Christ is welcome. Exactly. Exactly. Now, let me ask you another question. In putting the material together, you're a pastor. I don't know a pastor that isn't busy. <laughs> and putting this all together, how demanding was it? And was it, was it overwhelming or did you find it was well worth the trouble? Um, uh, visiting the, those places was uh, very inspiring. And coming back home with all of these books and all of these materials, uh, and also I was working on, on doing some research for my edu personal education, so it didn't bother me. It did take me a lot of time, mm -hmm. but uh, my wife was a great help on oh, that. Oh, right, okay. Yes. That's, that's helpful, isn't it? Yeah. We studied uh, those books and we decided to just take out those things that we consider were not as important and uh, we tweaked it, we made a few changes to the program, and we made it more adaptable to my congregation, Excellent. to my church. Okay, so each of these fast-growing churches, they had a deliberate, intentional, disciple-growing program in their local church, mm -hmm. and that was transforming their church? Absolutely. Um, well, some of those places that we where we participated in their program, uh, they shared with us that that was, very, that was key to not only attract the visitors, but to eventually helping them become members of their church. Right, okay, all right. Okay, so we, I'm eager to hear what you do with each of those four classes that you run. And um, we'd, we'd be best to do that all in one segment of the program. Yes. So we'll take a break, but we'll be right back and we'll cover what you cover in those four classes. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is a case study of discipleship training in a local church, and specifically, it's the Fresno Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church in California. And we have on our program today the pastor of that church, Pastor Antonio Reta. Now, Antonio, you run these four classes, and you found these, the benefit of these four classes by looking at the fastest-growing churches Yes. In, in the Americas, North America and South America. The first class you call WIN. win. Okay, yes. WIN. Tell us, what, what do you present in that class? Yeah, on, on, in this class, I make sure that our visitors or church members who sign up to take this class, we make sure that they learn everything that there is to be learn, about, in generally speaking, about my church. We try to encourage them. We try to show them uh, the benefits of becoming a member of my church. Okay, so we, these participants aren't necessarily members of your church. Yeah. They might be just early visitors. Or when you first launch the program, it would be helpful if you include church members to so they could get acquainted with the program. But uh, eventually, it will be it will be a program for your newcomers, for your visitors. Right, yes. okay. And so we talk to them about the, a little bit of the history of our church. We talk to them about the founding fathers of our church. It's a three and a half hour class. We usually teach them on Sundays, once a month. And then after that, we have uh, potluck. We, we eat together. We meet, we eat. That's our saying at church. And so we teach that class, uh, the first class, when uh, we tell them uh, our goal there is to encourage them to eventually become members of our church. So we talk about also the structure of our church, how we have a well put together structure, how well organized we are, the distri distribution of our funds. We also share that with them, our tithes and our offerings. So we try to get them acquainted with who we are 
and why we exist in this place, in this community. It sounds like you're sharing quite a lot of information and you're being very transparent about the church and the operation of the church. That's the word, the key word, transparency. And they really appreciate that. Okay. Uh, there's just so many stories, but one of them, it was this particular person who used to be a, a pastor, a leader of another congregation. And uh, he just happened to be uh, passing by my church on a weekday and he knocked on the door and he says, you know, I'd like to know more about your church. So I invited them to come and visit us on that particular Sunday when we were going to be uh, teaching this class. It only took him that class and the second one before he made a decision to become a member of our church. Extraordinary. And so it is very encouraging to see that uh, as you are sharing with them who you are and you answer whatever questions they want to ask you, um, including at times I had somebody ask me, how much you, do you get paid as a pastor? And I was happy to share with them mm. and share with them that pastoring is a calling from God or else I would probably stay in the other business that I used to have before where you could make more money. But mm -hmm. basically the goal is to make them feel comfortable and letting them know that this is the church that we would like to be part of. Right, so that's the first class. Yes, when? when? The second class? is called Consolidate. Right, okay. And in this class we try to uh, affirm our church members and the faith and our visitors, we try to also encourage them to develop the spiritual habits of a Christian. And we share with them four spiritual habits mm -hmm. of a Christian. And th those are prayer. We let them know how important it is to spend time alone in prayer. We teach them with the scriptures, you know, what is the right way to pray, the wrong way to pray. We also talk to them about the second spiritual habit, which is Bible reading and we encourage them we do creative things for them like for instance we uh, 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 challenge them uh, to read the New Testament in 30 days meaning you have to read ch 10 chapters each day so that you could finish uh, reading the New Testament in 30 days and at the end we give them a gift it could be uh, uh, the New Testament on audio mm -hmm. and they get encouraged to do that mm. and the third spiritual habit that we emphasize is tithing mm -hmm. we share with them scripture we show them the blessings that come from faithfully returning that which belongs to the Lord. And some of them, it takes them a little longer to, to say, I'm going to begin practicing this habit of a good Christian. But others, they try to do it as soon as they learn uh, the benefits and the blessings that come from doing that. Mm -hmm. And the last class that we share is fellowship. We encourage them to connect with our church members. We try, we do have potlucks every Saturday at my church. And so we make sure that this group of people, these visitors, they do stay with us. We connect with them, we fellowship with them, and we try to teach them that that is key in order to remain faithful. Superb. So that's the first class is win. win. The second class is consolidate, consolidate with those four segments. The third class is... And the third class is discipleship. Okay. And in a nutshell, this class, we try to help our church members and our visitors to find out what their spiritual gifts are. Mm. And um, it's not a, a hundred question inventory that we give to them. It's like, it's very simple, about eight to 10 questions. And once they answer those, we will be more or less able as pastors and along with my leadership team that helps me with that, we will be able to mm -hmm. uh, helping them, letting them know that you are here for a reason and God has given you gifts that he has not given to me. And so we are the body of Christ and we need to learn to work together. Okay. And then that leads us to the fourth class. And the fourth class is called SEND. Right. And by now, we're already in our fourth month of teaching this program, discipleship program. And SEND, basically, we're getting them ready to go out and do ministry in a creative way. Mm -hmm. uh, 
when I meet with them, I ask them the question, uh, uh, okay, we've, we're done with these classes, so what's next? And that's where I take the time again uh, to explain to them what is it that God wants them to do uh, based on the spiritual gift inventory that they filled out. Excellent, excellent. And so how, how are they sent? What, what do you do when you send them? Do you just send them out as lone individuals? What's the process then of sending yeah, when them? When they find out what their spiritual gift is, what they do, what I do, I present them uh, to my congregation. And I tell them, here we have these new church members, and this is their spiritual gift. And they themselves share it with the congregation. And once you know, but what happens is that a lot of people say, well, I think that's my spiritual calling too. So I want to join you and be part of your ministry. And that's how we create a lot of ministries in our church. Excellent. You know, there's a question. We've got to go to a break right now, but there's a question I'm eager to ask you. And that is, how do you recruit people? How do you promote this? How do you find people to join this four class program, discipleship program that you have. Can we talk about that after the break? Absolutely, we'll be happy to. Join us and we'll discover more about the Fresno Spanish Seventh-day Adventist discipleship program and particularly how they recruit people into that discipleship program. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is a discipleship program from the Fresno Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church, a very effective, practical, well-functioning discipleship program. And we have the pastor of that church, Pastor Antonio Huerta. Now, Antonio, yes. the question I'm eager to ask, there's two actually. One is, how do you recruit, how do you find people to join this discipleship program? How do you advertise it? And secondly, what are the results? All right, let's look at the first one first. Yes, um, what I do, I um, preach a series of sermons on service. And I take a whole month to not only talk to my congregation about the importance of reaching out to the community, but I also include in there the plans that we as a church have to introduce a discipleship program, to put it in place. And so throughout this whole month, I'm advertising it. I'm letting them know this is what's coming up. We would love for you to sign up. Uh, throughout this whole month, we already have a registration booth right outside of our church where people can come and sign up. Mm -hmm. And that's how we keep records of who's joining and who is not. Okay. So it takes us the whole month uh, through a sermon series on service. Now, share with us, Antonio, some of the results. Well, it's very exciting. The mm -hmm. results are wonderful. I mentioned earlier that on my third class, on the third class, which is discipleship, I want to make sure that they all took the class and make sure that they all filled out the uh, uh, the uh, questionnaire or the uh, um, the survey. Mm -hmm. And once they fill that out, um, after our fourth class, I meet with them on a personal basis, and I ask them. You know, what is your ministry? Uh, do you know what the spiritual gift is in your life? If they're not sure, some are sure. And like, for example, this one person who said, uh, I know what my spiritual gift is. You already know me by now. You know, four months I've been taking, you know, for four months I've been here with you. So you already know that I used to be a former uh, leader of another uh, congregation of another church. And, uh, and I believe this is the church that I want to be a part of. I already got baptized, and my gift is preaching and teaching. So what am I going to do? And uh, I said, well, you're going to preach and you're going to teach. When? How? And so I uh, told them, you know, in a few uh, months, we're going to be having an evangelistic effort going on here at our, in our city. In fact, we had eight evangelistic efforts going on simultaneously in the city, and I want you to be one of those evangelists. Would you be interested? We'll train you, we will equip you. And his eyes went big, and he says, I'd be happy to do that. And so we provided him with a team uh, to work with him, but he was the evangelist. He was mm -hmm. the preacher, and we got wonderful results out of his, his uh, effort. Excellent. 
Another person uh, that I can think of, and we get a lot of those, um, I, uh, this particular woman, I asked her, do you know what your spiritual gift is? And she says, Pastor, I don't know. Sometimes they think that their spiritual gift is, you know, reading scriptures uh, from the pulpit, but not always. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual ministry mainly is right outside of the church. You go out there to the community. And uh, she told me, I don't know what it is. And so we looked at, at you know, the answers that she placed on that, serve, on that questionnaire. And I said, well, I see that, that uh, uh, you are a hairstylist. That's what you do for a living. Yes, do you love your job? She says, oh, that's why I'm there. I could be there, you know, all day long. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, why, uh, how about if we start a, for the lack of a uh, more creative uh, name to the ministry, how about if we start a haircut ministry? free haircuts to to the community and she said that's a wonderful idea i'll give three hours of my time to do free free haircuts for the needy families of our church Excellent. there you go that's your ministry mm -hmm. we had uh, another person who is a mechanic and uh, pastor you know i'm all dirty and i like fixing cars that's my that's all i can do and i said well how about if we your goal is to help the community to be of a blessing to the community how about if we offer free oil changes to the community every two months or every three months his eyes went big and he says that's a wonderful idea i'd be happy to do it and so what i do when i present them to my congregation and i tell them here is this new group of uh, church members who have discovered what their ministry is supposed to be, they're going to share it with you. And so the mechanic says, well, I'm going to be offering free oil changes to the community. Mm. And then another person there, I'm a mechanic too, I can help out. I'm a hairstylist too, I'll be part of your ministry. That's how it happens. Occasionally, twice a year, mainly, we get all of these ministries together, the psychologists, the dentists, the doctors, we get them all together and we promote that event, free services to the whole community. We get the TV channels, we get all of these people coming, talking about what the services that our church are giving for free to the community. We get a lot of advertising. Mm, wow. How, how well is the church growing? God has blessed us. Uh, in the last uh, 10 years, we've planted three new churches. Praise because God. that's the way, or the most effective way of growing a congregation by planting new churches. Yeah. And not only that, but you see our members, they're excited, they're thrilled about doing the work that God has called us to do. And involved and yes. needed. Exactly. Yeah. Exceptional. Thank you so much, Pastor Antonio. You're welcome. Thank you very much indeed. And we want to thank you for joining us for this very special program of Ministry in Motion. If you'd like some more resources, come and visit us on our website, ministryinmotion.tv. There you'll find a rich array of resources. All of the programs that we've ever put together and have been screened are available there on that website. You can use them for various pur purposes, training and so forth as well. Until next time, may God richly bless you.